Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Who is the strongest person you know? Do they have really big muscles? What do you think you would need to do to get really, really strong? Today, we're going to learn about one of the strongest men in the Old Testament, Samson. God promised to give Samson strength and make him a judge as long as Samson did not cut his hair. Let's read more about what Samson did with his strength. But first, I'm going to challenge you to some riddles. Let's see if you could figure out the answers. How many months have 28 days in them? Do you know? The answer is all of them. They all have 28 days, at least. Some of them have more. Next one. What has hands and a face, but no arms or head? Do you know that one? A clock. All right, here's the next one. It belongs to you, but your friends use it more. What do you think that one is? It's your name. Next one. It has a tail and a head, but no body. What do you think that one is? Can you flip a coin without heads or tails? It's a coin. Next one. What two things can you never eat for breakfast? Lunch and dinner. All right, here's the last one. Are you ready? Which word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? The word short. Did you know the answer to some of those? Riddles are fun to solve. They often have a double or hidden meaning. In our Bible story today, Samson told a riddle to the Philistines. Do you think they were able to figure out the answer? Last week, we learned a new big picture question. What is the fair payment for sin? Sin is a serious problem. God is holy and just. Our sin carries a serious punishment. The fair payment for sin is death. Every person is born a sinner. There's nothing we can do to meet God's perfect standard of holiness. And because God is perfectly holy, all sin deserves death. We all face physical death. But if we die without a right relationship with God, we experience spiritual death too. And that's bad news. The good news is that God is merciful and loving, and he made the way for us to be saved from our sins. God sent his son, Jesus, to take the punishment we deserve. All right, let's watch today's video. The Israelites were God's people, but they were stuck in a pattern of ignoring God, being attacked by enemies, and then calling out to God to rescue them. When the Israelites ignored God again, God let their enemies, the Philistines, rule over them. One day, the angel of the Lord spoke to a man and his wife. The angel said that they would have a son, and their son would save God's people from the Philistines. God had special instructions for their son. He should never cut his hair. The couple had a baby boy, and they named him Samson. God made Samson strong. When Samson grew up, he decided he wanted to marry a Philistine woman. Samson and his parents went to meet her. Along the way, a lion jumped out, and Samson killed the lion. Later, bees made honey in the lion's body. Samson ate some of the honey and gave some to his parents. When Samson got married, he told a riddle to a group of Philistines at the wedding. Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the straw came something sweet. The riddle was about the lion and the honey, but the Philistines could not figure it out. They asked Samson's bride for help. She told the men the answer. Samson was angry, and he left without his wife. When he went back to get her, she was gone. Samson ran away to another city, where he fell in love with a woman named Delilah. The Philistines wanted to know why Samson was so strong. So they gave Delilah money to help them find out. Samson told Delilah, if you tie me up, I will be weak. But that was not true. 
Then Samson said, If you weave my hair into a loom, I will be weak. Again, this was a lie. Finally, Samson told Delilah the truth. If you cut my hair, I will be weak. So when Samson was sleeping, a Philistine came and cut his hair. Samson wasn't strong anymore. The Philistines grabbed him, and they took him away in chains. One day, the Philistines made Samson stand between two pillars in their temple. Samson cried out to God, Lord, strengthen me once more. So God strengthened Samson. Samson pushed on the pillars and collapsed the temple. Samson and everyone in the temple died. But Samson had saved the Israelites from the Philistines. Samson's sin led to his own death, but God used his death to save the Israelites from their enemies. Samson's story reminds us of Jesus. Jesus never sinned, but God sent him to die on the cross and rise again to rescue people from sin and give them eternal life. Many people hear this story and think that Samson was strong because he had long hair. Is that why Samson was strong? No. Samson's strength was God's power working through him. Samson was supposed to never cut his hair because he would be set apart to be used by God. His long hair was a symbol of his dedication to God. But Samson showed by his action that he wasn't really all that dedicated to God. God had instructed the Israelites not to marry women who did not worship God. But Samson married a Philistine woman. The Israelites were supposed to keep their marriage vows, but Samson loved Delilah, who wasn't his wife. But even though Samson chose to sin in these ways, he still never cut his hair, and God continued to give him strength to defeat the Philistines. However, when Delilah accused Samson of not loving her, he told her about the Nazarite vow and how his hair was never to be cut. God left Samson because Samson had betrayed his promise to God, showing again that he cared more about his own way than he did about honoring God. God still used Samson though, didn't he? Samson was treated awfully by the Philistines. Samson realized that he needed God and cried out to God for help. So God gave Samson strength one last time. Samson gave his life to save the Israelites from their enemy, the Philistines. Samson's sin led to his own death, but God used his death to save the Israelites from their enemies. Samson's story reminds us of Jesus. Jesus never sinned, but God sent him to die on the cross and rise again to rescue people from sin and give them eternal life. All right, now let's watch questions from kids. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Lillian from Wichita, Kansas asked, Is it okay to be friends with someone who doesn't believe in God? Lillian, that is a really great question. Yes, we can be friends with people who don't believe in God. I have friends who don't believe in God, and it gives me an opportunity to share the gospel with them. It gives me an opportunity to introduce Christ to them. You know, Jesus Christ himself shared the gospel with many people uh, who did not even believe in him. Also, we can be friendly and not be friends with people. Let me explain. We can be kind to people at school and be friendly with people on the play playground, and we don't necessarily have to call them our friends. Uh, we should choose our friends really, really wisely, and I would encourage you to talk with adults or your Sunday school teacher about ways to pick really good friends. You see, I think of people in a few different categories when I think about friends and people that are not friends. I think about people who are hostile or who are who are hard towards the gospel and don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. And then I think about people who are just kind of seeking. They want to know more about Jesus Christ. And those people who are hostile towards the gospel, I really, really pray for them. 
for the Lord to soften the heart towards the gospel. And those people who are seeking, I try to become friends with them so that I can share the gospel with them. In addition to the friends that are our age, I also want you to know that sometimes those people that we call friends could actually lead us in the wrong direction. And so it's again important to choose our friends wisely. There are even examples in the scripture where people have listened to their friends and their friends have given them bad information. But the Bible tells us that we should not only listen to our friends, but that we should also listen to the people that are older than us. So you should have older people speaking into your life and you should ask older people for advice so they can help guide you on the best friends to choose and help guide you through life. Paul discipled Timothy and Paul gave a lot of information to Titus and both Timothy and Titus looked up to Paul and when they needed uh, answers about questions, they would reach out and ask Paul. So I would encourage you to ask people that are older than you. Uh, again, as we think about becoming friends with, with people who don't believe in God, I want to think about two big words. One, apologetics, which is how we defend the faith that we believe in. And the other big word is evangelism. And it's an opportunity for us to share the gospel with people who are both not our friends and people who are our friends. So seek and find opportunities to share the gospel with people that are around you. How can we show Jesus' love to people who don't follow Jesus? Is it okay to be friends with someone who doesn't believe in God? How can you show love to those who don't follow Jesus? Samson used riddles to try to trick the Philistines. When we live on mission, we try to help people be freed from the tricks and lies of Satan so they can love Jesus. Let's watch our mission video. Jen, quit cramming for finals. You either know it or you don't by now. Ha, what are you up to? Studying, actually. Summer plans? Lifeguarding. Saving lives. The usual. Talk to Mark lately? Not since prom. Why? What did he say? Nothing. He was talking about Central America after class the other day. Know anything about that? Hey. Hey. Didn't you go to Central America last year? Yeah. What was it like? Beyond words. What did you do? What happened? Make any friends? life-changing. Going again this summer. Wanna go? One day, you might go on a mission trip without your family. Until then, what are some things you can do at home to help students like Mark and missionaries in other countries? We can give our money, pray, learn about missions, and encourage missionaries. All right, let's look up our key passage again. It's Romans 6.23. Go get your Bibles. Okay, we're going to start in the table of contents, and Romans is in the New Testament. It's one of my very favorite books, and it is on page 
1238 in my Bible. So I'm going to flip towards the back. It's pretty far back there. Still going. It's pretty far back there. All right, there's Romans right there. And we need chapter six. So see the big blue number one? We're gonna find the blue number six. There's two, there's three. There's four, we're almost there. There's five, there's six. See that? Now underneath it, we're gonna look for the tiny number 23. And it looks like it is right here at the very bottom of my page. Do you see the tiny 23? And it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 6.23 is good news for us. God wants to give us the gift of life, a life that is eternal, everlasting, and forever. Through Jesus, our sin can be forgiven and we can have life with him. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for your word. Help us understand how Samson points us to Jesus. You sent your son to live a perfect life and die on the cross for our sins. Thank you for rescuing us from our sins. Amen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.